guys, Cody with Evolution Personal Training. Uh, obviously, we're not in the office today. I may or may not have broken a tripod. I don't know how. I'm just going to say that's that trainer magic right there. But I needed to address some concerns some clients had regarding the video from Tuesday in that we talked about health as being the state of your systems, your body, everything not being inefficient or as being the least inefficient that they can be and that pertaining to your fitness, and that fitness is just your ability to do a task. What I'm trying to do is get your metabolism fit for fat loss. Now that does mean we might have to make what can, on the outside, and if it was in the context of another program, I need you to make unhealthy choices. In this case, I'm having you deprived of the whole fruits and certain vegetables. I'm having you make some strange choices with your carbohydrates, or limiting certain protein choices, we're modifying fat choices and we're changing the timing and the consistency of meals. Now that makes sense in the context of the fat loss training and the style of fat loss training that I've got most of my clients on. And that we are training for 30 minutes a day at a very high intensity but not using the high intensity interval training system which I have some personal uh, problems about and some professional reservations with. But we've got everybody training for 30 minutes a day, three to five days a week depending on program mostly with resistance training, minimal ab work, and certain kinds of cardiovascular activity, plus 30 to 45 minutes outside activity, or at least 30 minutes of outside skill-based activity, like jiu-jitsu, tennis, anything like that. Now, that meal plan works only in the context of all of that. And it only works for the goal of fat loss, consistent insulin resensitization, where we get it to where you can be more sensitive to your insulin, so it takes less insulin to get all of your nutrients processed. You have less insulin pop whenever you have even very high glycemic uh, carbohydrates. It, it's for overall health regulation, but my regulation of your health for you being a more efficient, more fat burning machine and a machine less tending towards inflammation. I really feel like I'm about to go off on about three or four different tangents, so I'm gonna make this a super short video. The meal plans that we've got you on, especially those meal plans that require dietary restrictions such that you don't have a lot of fruits, uh, you have certain kinds of vegetables, maybe it feels like too much, certain kinds that you feel like you don't get enough, the weird protein and fat choices that we make, that, that's all for the very specific purpose, purpose of fat loss and making your metabolism more prone to jettisoning fat, making you more sensitive to insulin, making you more energetic, making you less inflammatory prone and overall improving your mood and your intellectual functioning. I have a very specific parameter in which the whole program works. It's kind of like that Michael Crichton book and that strangely entertaining movie The Andromeda Strain. That is a really, I can't remember if it's a virus or a bacteria, but it exists in this very small acidic parameter. I, I'm sorry, I completely forgot the term for it, but there's this very small spectrum of acidity in which this virus or this bacteria can exist. If you go above that or if you go below that, there's a, a zero survivability for it. The exact same thing goes for the meal plan that I have my clients on. It's not universally applicable. There's a lot of athletes who would see very negative health and fitness and physique consequences if they did this. I couldn't have bodybuilders or powerlifters on this meal plan. I know very little about bodybuilding. I know a little bit more about powerlifting, but not near as much as I would like to. But I do know that these meal plans would be deleterious to those people's health, physique, fitness, and overall performance in that particular sport. The diets that I have y'all on are, they're, I mean, they're mostly custom cut. I have certain base formula that I use for everybody. For example, most everybody of a certain height and certain scale, or excuse me, certain goal weight is going to have about the same caloric count or the same it's, I, don't, I don't actually count calories, it's more of a volume count. Total like, physical amount, poundage of food, if you will, per week. And I'm making this video more, I mean, it, it is a response to a lot of the comments I got from the Tuesday video, but it's also because I had two or three of my clients asking questions for friends and family they had distributed their meal plans to. And that is one of those things, guys, those meal plans are for you. Now, I do want you to talk amongst yourselves, discuss the differences in your meal plans, discuss the similarities in y'all's meal plans, but don't give them out to people that aren't in the program because they can be harmful to those people because I have not programmed for them. 
I don't know what their activity style is. I don't know what their activity level is. I don't know what their adaptation to their current activity level is. Guys, I appreciate you listening. We'll talk to you on Saturday, hopefully with a really nice, colorful uh, dry erase board. I'm going to swing around here so I can actually hit the stop button without looking at the camera. Oh, I did anyway, guys. We'll talk to you on Saturday.